Hey guys, welcome, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. If you're new to this channel, hey guys, welcome, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. If you're new to this channel, make sure you're hitting that subscribe button to stay inspired, to wise up and rise up above these narcissists. So with that being said, you guys, oh yeah, and at the end of the day, if you guys like this video, please give me a thumbs up. What that does is it helps with the algorithm to get this video out there to more people who need to hear this message. So with that being said, let's get right into the video. So today I want to talk about what's the difference between healthy love versus narcissistic love, right? There's a lot of people out there who they experience a narcissistic person and they believe that they were loved or they experienced love with this person, at the end of the day, a healthy individual doesn't love you today and then hate you tomorrow. There is not a fluctuation. Obviously, with health, with healthy, a healthy relationship or you know, a person who truly loves you, you're not always gonna agree. There's gonna be disagreements at times, but at least there's communication. With a person with healthy love, at least they're gonna say, they can admit when they're right and admit what they're wrong. And then you guys can also come in the middle to come up with a, a solution or, you know, talk about the issue and talk about the problem and find out how you can come up with a solution. That is healthy love, right? Where you guys are both being able to communicate, both be able to respect each other, right? Time, energy, respect each other's opinion, you know, and both be able to look at their right or wrong in what they do and then come to a healthy solution how to fix the problem. Where again, in an unhealthy relationship with like basically a narcissist who has a personality disorder, you may think, okay, I love this person. I want to, you know, hear what they have to say. I want to come up with a solution. I want to come up with a problem. But with a narcissist, they have a personality disorder. They don't know how to open up like that because with the narcissist, they departmentalize their feelings. And they, again, they, when it comes to their emotions, they know where to draw the limit and draw the line and not give themselves that opportunity to feel those emotions. So when they feel now that they're on the other end, they're feeling like, you know, that they have to own up to their responsibilities and what they're doing wrong, they will gaslight you, they will manipulate the situation, right? And they will always turn it around on you or change the subject. In situations, they may come to you and they may say, I'm sorry, you know, I'm sorry I did that. But at the end of the day, that is just a, a, the love bombing to cover up what it is that they know that they did wrong, to suck you back in to for you to feel sorry for them, for you to feel bad, even though, even though they were wrong and they had no right to treat you the way that they treated you, right? Some narcissists won't even say sorry. There's, there's, you know, th there's different ways on how they may come back around to love bomb you. Some won't say sorry. Some might just ignore you. They will not answer your calls. They will not answer your text messages. They will, um, they will punish you basically, right? So there's two types where one will come and they will love bomb you. They will say, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean what I said. I didn't mean what I did. But that is just to cover up what they did wrong they will blindsight you right on what they did wrong so you can feel sorry for them even though they were wrong right and they don't wouldn't own up to anything they did wrong they won't try to fix the situation they would just say sorry to cover it up and move on and move forward they, that's the end of it that's the end of it you have no say they don't want to hear your explanation they don't want to try to fix anything they just want to say sorry close the door and end the discussion, end the conversation, right? That's not healthy, right? Healthy love is, again, like I said from the beginning, is communication. It's wanting to fix the problem, wanting to fix the issue, wanting to, you know, evolve and grow together, not just shutting you down and making you feel like you have no say and making you feel guilty and gaslighting you. That's not healthy love. Right. And again, narcissists have a personality disorder. They know how to de departmentalize their feelings, not to feel those emotions. So then they would have to own up for anything they did wrong. Right. 
So that's, you know, the difference between a narcissistic person who says they love you and you loving them comparison to a healthy, um, healthy love, right? And they're in, in a healthy relationship, there's consistency, right? There's consistency in their inti in intimacy and how they're treating you. Um, instead of one minute, someone's coming around, they're giving you in intimacy, they're giving you love, they're giving you attention, they're giving you affection, but then they can just shut that off. And then the next day, be like cold turkey, not give you no affection, not no love, no intimacy, no nothing. Just treat you like you don't even exist. That's not true love. True love is they feel this, they feel this connection with you where that stuff, intimacy, affection, um, it, it, it all comes natural. It's neutral. It comes natural, right? Um, there's again, it's not like you're fighting with somebody with a roller coaster that one minute they're high, one minute they're low. And there's this constant up and up and down battle of feeling a hot and cold feeling when you're with this person, not knowing when they're going to treat you like shit or not knowing when they're going to start to argue with you, not knowing when, you know, they may belittle you or gaslight you or no, that's not true love. You know, true love, again, you guys respect each other. You guys um, have compassion for each other's feelings and emotions. It's not just I'll block you out whenever I feel like it type of thing, right? So, and the thing about it is that with the, being in a narcissistic relationship, everything is doubled. Everything is extreme. So when you guys have an argument, it's just not a regular argument. This argument goes to extreme. Some of them may abuse you, right? Physically, some of them might abuse you with words, verbally, very aggressive and very, um, you know, very vindictive and hurtful and spiteful. So just because a man or a woman doesn't put their hands on you doesn't mean that they're not abusing you. You can still get abused verbally. And a lot of people, even though we know this, we still don't take it into consideration that somebody is mentally and emotionally abusing you, right? It's so to understand that as well, that if somebody is going to mentally and emotionally abuse you, do they really love you? Is that love? No, that is not love. If somebody is going to mentally and emotionally abuse you because abuse is abuse. That's it. They don't have to put their hands on you to abuse you. And I hope that this will shed light on you guys that if you are in a narcissistic relationship or you experience a narcissistic relationship, nine times out of 10, you were abused mentally and emotionally, right? And verbally. So take that in or you were either one abused, abused verbally or abused mentally or abused um, emotionally, and most of the times those combined with each other, or they were physically putting their hands on you, right? <clears throat> so their love for you isn't like, again, it isn't like, uh, it, it's, it's always going to be a roller coaster. Just understand that, right? Their, their, their love is not love, it is supply. See, that's the difference with people being in a relationship with a narcissist. They think that Oh, they, but they showed me ways that they love me. No, they just showed you ways on how they want to get, how they want to condition you to get supply from you. That, that love bombing phase was just a mask. That was not, again, this is what I'm trying to say. Real love comparison to, you know, somebody who you think loved you is never going to be an up and down roller coaster, you know, always messing with your, your mental health and your emotions. Healthy love is predictable and dependable and it's stable. It's not a roller coaster, right? Of, you know, one minute feeling like this person cares for me and the one per minute this person doesn't, right? At the end of the day, it, there's consistency. Whether you guys have, you know, um, disagreements, there's still consistency of that person wanting to be there and showing up for you, right? And I think, again, that's what a lot of people get confused with when they're in a narcissistic, narcissistic relationship, a lot of times that we may think us on the other end, we're, we're experiencing love, but we're actually sometimes experiencing codependency, right? We're codependent on that person. It's not really love because when you think about it, 
experiencing that, is that really love that you experienced with that person? Or were you being codependent on that person, relying for them to always be there, um, you know, fighting for you for, to get back that person that, you know, that person who treated you amazing at the beginning and you're just fighting, 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 holding on to something that was actually never really there, right? That was just a false image, right? That person was not who you really fell in love with. That was just a mask. So at the end of the day, a lot of times we get confused on, you know, love comparison to codependency, because when you truly, truly love somebody, you will have ultimate respect, right? And you would care for them to say, I'm going to always understand that they're going to do what's best for them. So when you truly love somebody, you're not holding on to a person if they don't want to be with you. You're actually okay with letting them go because you love them enough to say, I want them to be happy. I want them to be happy. And I know at the end of the day, whatever they're going to do, I need to respect it because at the end of the day, if something is truly meant for you, right, it will come back healthy. It will come back in a way where, again, you guys both respect each other's emotions. You guys are, you know, able to communicate with each other in a healthy way. You know, like you guys are able to put aside your egos and actually, again, hear each other out and be there for each other. That's the difference. Where comparison, again, with the narcissist, when you let them go and they come back, they're coming back at the end of the day just for supply. That's what I want to help you guys to understand. It's not because, because a lot of people get confused and they think, okay, well, they, they left me, they got a new supply, and now they're trying to come back because they realize what they're missing. Or they went out, they, they you know, discarded me and they didn't get a new supply, but now they're trying to creep back in because they, they miss me. No, they don't really, they don't miss you as a person and how you're thinking. They miss the supply that they were getting from you, whether that be attention, affection, sex, um, money, a, a place to sleep, whatever. Whatever supply you were giving them that was feeding their ego and feeding what exactly they wanted to make them feel whole is what they're missing. That's it. A lot of times, People who have narcissistic uh, personality disorder, they, they are empty inside and they need to rely on outside resources to fill them up. Some of them rely on, you know, drugs. Some of them rely on alcohol. Some of them rely on constantly being out and being validated by friends, right? Or family members. They have to keep up an image of looking great and being the best person on the outside, right? So a lot of times they have inner issues and because of their personality disorder and them departmentalizing their emotions and knowing when to show their emotions and not to show their emotions, they never really take a step back to dig deep and do the inner work to figure out what are the issues within and how they can fix it. Because because at the end of the day, their ego will never, ever allow them to look inward to say, what are the issues within? They might talk a great game to say, oh, yeah, I'm sorry for doing this. I'm sorry. But at the end of the day, that is just to manipulate the situation to get what they want from whosoever they want. Right. So they know how to, to, to show certain emotions to manipulate you to get what they want from you. So at the end of the day, when you can stand in the facts to understand the patterns, understand that these personality traits that the narcissist has, then you can fully take a step back and come to the realization that you were not actually really in love, right? Because again, healthy love does not work that way, right? With, with being, in love, being in love with somebody. Being in love with somebody as well does not come with attachments right? If you're finding yourself attached to that person, then you really didn't love them. You just had codependency. You just were trauma bonded to this person, right? And because of that trauma bond and because of that codependency, it felt 
like it was love. But really and truly, when you're in a toxic situation like that and somebody is treating you like that, it's not actually love. You will not, you would truly understand that you will never feel love for somebody who is treating you vindictively, spitefully, abusing you mentally and emotionally. That is just maybe past childhood trauma that you experienced, maybe you've seen in your family, maybe you experienced um, in your surrounding and you thought that that was okay. I can sit here and I can be honest with you guys. I experienced that. I seen, you know, my, my, my mom and my dad fight and be, my dad used to abuse my mom mentally, emotionally. My, I, I experienced, you know, my father was a complete narcissist. You know, I experienced that as a child. And then as I grew up, seeing that in my environment, even though I knew it was wrong, I ended up tr attracting somebody in my life who treated me exactly how my, my mom and my, da um, my, da uh, my dad used to treat my mom. And at the end of the day, because of that past hood, childhood trauma, because of, you know, all that that I've seen in my environment sticking to my subconscious mind, I then again... I allowed certain things with certain people because I didn't even understand what was healthy boundaries, right? And this is where I'm trying to, you know, step into saying true love comes within. I fully, through all my experience, I fully understood after that you will understand true love when you know true love with inside self. That's when you will understand true love and when how you can understand true love with inside self is do I have healthy boundaries with toxic people outside of my environment? Do I have healthy boundaries? Do I know what healthy boundaries look like? Right. Am I am I implementing them? Am I being able to comfortably be confident to not allow people to judge me and not care so much what the outside world has to say, but care so much about what my inner voice has to say. Listening and trusting your intuition, trusting what you, you feel and how, how you're acknowledging your emotions, acknowledging, you know, if one day you're sad or you're angry, understanding those emotions, loving on them, caring about yourself, with your mental health and your and, and your emotions and your feelings, caring about those, not judging your not being judgmental to yourself. Because I know a lot of people out there, we say we love ourselves, but we're all we're our worst enemy sometimes. We judge ourselves, you know, about our body. We judge ourselves about, you know, maybe school. We judge ourselves maybe about work, about money, about friends, about just different things outside of ourselves we constantly beat ourselves up and our, we judge ourselves so if we're constantly beating ourselves up and we're constantly judging ourselves do we really love ourselves right and again if you cannot stand there and look yourself in the mirror and truly be happy with self and love yourself then how can you really realistically love somebody else you can't because love starts within we are love and then what we do is we share our loves with other people around us. We vibrate love because everything is energy. Everything stems from within. So when you vi when again, you can respect your boundaries, respect yourself, um, love yourself, not judge yourself, and all these other, um, other emotions to show yourself self-love from within, then you start to vibrate that outwards. And then you can honestly say you can share and love somebody else right inside of your life and share that love so with that being said you guys I, I i just wanted to break it down to help you guys to understand you know what is healthy love within a relationship comparison to you know feeling that you did love and you experienced love with that narcissist because again that person does not know they know how to departmentalize their emotions to not show true love to other people because of, again their traumas and their their um you know their emptiness in certain areas with inside of themselves right they can say they love people but realistically they just know how to utilize people to the best of their abilities for, from with inside of themselves so the sad part about it is they truly don't know how to love because they they 
don't want to. They know how to limit their emotions and how they say it. This is why they can throw around the word love so effortlessly and easily, but still manipulate you, gaslight you, and, ab and abuse you mentally, emotionally, or sometimes verbally. That is not love. So at the end of the day, I just wanted to break it down to help you guys, you know, give you guys that reassurance that that was not love that you're experiencing with that narcissist, that that is not love what you're experiencing them if you're still with them, you know, and understanding how to stand in the facts and how to understand how to pour love more into yourself, right? So then that way you can attract somebody else who will reciprocate the same amount of love because a lot of times people don't understand that narcissists come inside of our lives to teach us valuable lessons of self. They are coming to teach you lessons that you need to learn with inside self. So maybe if you're, if you're seeing consistently that that narcissist is not respecting you, it's time to look inward to say, am I respecting myself? This is another great tip that will help you guys to turn the attention off of them and put the attention all into you. And that's how you will be able to heal on an everyday basis is taking the attention off of them and putting the attention on to you. What that will also do is it will break the trauma bond and it will break the codependency because you're taking off all the focus off of them and putting the focus in on you to heal, to wise up, and rise up inside of your life. Thank you so much for tuning in this video, you guys. I hope that this video has inspired you and uplifted you in some sort of way to understand what you're experiencing is not normal. You know, what you went through was traumatizing. And at the end of the day, you can heal from it. You can grow from it, from pouring all the attention and all the, the love that you thought you were giving to that person into you to love you and put yourself first to to attract a bet, uh, uh, love, an actual love relationship into your life. Thank you so much again, you guys. I really, really appreciate you guys. He, let's keep wising up and rising up above these narcissists. Make sure if you enjoyed this video again, give me a thumbs up, uh, leave me a comment, let me know what your thoughts are, right? And if you want to be a part of the Wise Up, Rise Up community, make sure you're tuning in to go check out my TikTok channel. I drop at least three amazing videos a day on there. Go check out my podcast and go check out the Facebook, uh, the Wise Up Rise Up Facebook group to keep you inspired. If you want to ask me any questions, you can ask me there. I want to help you guys to self-heal from this traumatizing experience. So again, you can wise up and rise up and be the best damn version of yourself after experiencing narcissistic abuse. Thanks so much again for tuning in, you guys. And I'll see you guys again on another video. Take care.